All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awakened Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And if you are new to my show, Awakened Happiness Now, new to my YouTube channel, etc., please do uh, subscribe. We do live shows a couple of times a week normally. And um, it is my deepest desire, wish, and intention to bring forward to you resources, support, speakers, guests who can share their teachings, wisdom, experiences, tools, their own resources and support so that we all can thrive, that we can move forward in our lives so that we can create the life that we desire with ease and grace. And, you know, so part of my mission is to support you on your journey uh, in consciousness. So this is also about raising your vibration and frequency and raising your consciousness, expanding your consciousness to remember and be who you truly are. So with that, um, Again, thank you so much for being here. Please do um, watch all of the other shows as well from the past and moving forward because we have some wonderful information, wonderful guests and wonderful support for you here. So there's a lot of support available. So today, my good friend, Sidley Shah is back with us. She is today going to be talking about the explosive transformational potential of goddess Mahakali. So I'm excited about this, and we're going to be learning a lot today. We're going to talk about and learn a lot about why Mahakali is important for evil eye removal. What is the spiritual game of evil eye? We're going to talk about the difference between evil eye, black magic, and entity attachments. Can we heal these issues ourselves? <laughs> I'm not sure. Can the simple healing tools help us get rid of evil eye? We're going to learn a simple exercise on first aid for evil eye and black magic. We're going to get an understanding of the EPS framework, emotional, practical, and spiritual exercises framework to start defying evil eye. And we're going to learn about the Mahakali mantra chant for empowering the core to defy evil eye. All that and so much more. And of course, if you don't know Siddhi, you haven't worked with her before, um, let me just tell, her, tell you a little bit about her. She's, like I said, she's been on our show many times. We love having her here. I've worked with her personally myself, taken a few of her classes and workshops as well. So I absolutely love her. I love her teaching style. And um, there's always wonderful information, practical <laughs> tools and information that she shares. So with more than 100 spiritual healing courses under her belt, including being a pioneer of dragon and goddess healings in India and the founder of the Celestial Dragons Healing System, Siddhi is a powerhouse in the healing world. Her healing sessions have shown magical recoveries for people across all areas of life, and her money healing sessions start showing results with just one session. But that's not all. Siddhi's mentorship has helped hundreds of healers upgrade their powers and benefit professionally, and more than 80% of people who attend her Fat reduction sessions observe significant fat loss in just two weeks' time. So Siddhi is known for being a channel for goddesses, angels, and dragon spirits, conveying their help in many ways under the banner of Yana's Healing Studio. She has received numerous awards and accolades for her work as a psychic reader and healer, including being a master of more than 100 healing courses. So Siddhi's biggest asset is her Celestial Dragons Healing System, as a unique system that is true to her alone. She has successfully healed many complicated cases, such as weight reduction, money and finances, flow, premature babies growth, pregnancy complexities, skin and hair issues, and more. So today we're going to be working with the goddess energy. So she's going to be the conduit for the goddess energy herself. And Siddhi is going to help us to transform our financial situation and manifest the blessings that we all deserve. So please join me in welcoming Siddhi back to the show. Siddhi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such kind words. Alara, thank you so very much. Oh, I'm so, so glad you're here. I, I'm excited about this conversation. I have to tell you, I have recently been experiencing some evil eye stuff. Um, I don't think black magic, but, you know, negative stuff. <laughs> okay. At attacks etc right so um yeah. it has not been a fun couple of weeks so i and in even in the past for myself i've had other entity attachments in the past so it is kind of like um and you know because of what i do as well so it's uh i'm not gonna say i'm a portal to it but i've experienced it many times and so i definitely need help um my this last time I did get some help from a few people including including my own guru um and I'm waiting for 
uh, a remedy that he suggested for me to come uh, that I ordered. So I'm waiting for that to come so that I can start using it. But in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, I'm just so excited that you're going to share this with us because I'll, you know, to be honest, the world that we live in is not always as positive and light filled and et cetera, as we would like. Right. And unfortunately there are some people who do not have good intentions. Um, and sometimes it can be simple things, but still it's, it, you know, we wouldn't say anything about it about anybody, but that doesn't mean that somebody else won't, et cetera. Right. So, and when you're in the public eye, especially you also have to be extra careful. So <laughs> <laughs> let's get started. So let's talk about Mahakali. So the goddess Mahakali, for people who may not know who she is, what her powers are, um, how she works. Let's let's start there and then and go into whatever else you want to. Okay, sure. So right, I planned a different beginning, but thank you so very much for making it directly up to goddess Mahakali. Aha, such a beautiful liberator. So oh, to help all of us understand who truly Goddess Mahakali is, I'll go a little, I'll bring out some stories of Hinduism and some references of Hinduism, right? So as we believe in Trinity, the three gods and goddesses, the one who transforms, one who maintains, and one who creates. So the one who transforms, we all know, is Shiva and his consort is uh, goddess Shakti or Parvati or the fiercest of them all is goddess Mahakali. Now why goddess Mahakali? When we are willing to transform a few things or be liberated from a few things, these two are said to be the most powerful gods to come into this play and help you. In fact, the name Mahakali itself is a suggestion. So I will break it down for you. Maha is the great power and Kali. Kali, the name uh, means a lot of things. Kali also means someone who's dark skinned. And Kali comes from the word Kal. We must have heard about Kala Chakra or Kal itself means the wheel of time. Right? So someone who helps us get breakthroughs. So even if it is a planetary situation not going well with us or some kind of evil eye or entity attachment or we need to work with our protective field, this goddess's intervention is said to be bringing in results in minutes while other deities or gods, goddesses could take months, weeks or longer time. So, and why? This goddess comes with a lot of fierce power. She comes with creativity. She comes with uh, one more important aspect that a lot of us may not know is that they have also given refuge to the entities, Gana, Preta, Bhuta, what we usually know as the dark entities while other gods and goddesses refuse to give them a refuge. So all of these fall under her command. If she commands them to do a certain thing, they have to obey her command. So it's, it's like when we are going through this dark time and some dark entity or some dark energy is actually troubling us, we go to the mother who, whose child this one is and say, hey, please take care of your child is troubling me. And that's the fastest thing. That's what we do when we have trouble with anyone, we, any child, that we go to their mother and say that, why don't you look after this child of yours? So these are some basic and fundamental uh, ideas behind why we work with Goddess Mahakali. And if we were to speak alone of her power, which exceeds all the other gods, goddesses in Hinduism, and uh, that's one of the brilliant parts about this. But before we move into how do we work with evil eye, black magic, and what is the energy science behind it, uh, some of us may or may not have truly identified whether what we have is evil eye. So some of these signs that I'm going to talk about will help everyone figure out whether what you're 
actually facing is an evil eye, right? So I'm just going to throw a few possibilities and see whether these are happening with you. Number one is the feeling lethargic for no reason. You're otherwise very uh, charged up, but you can now stay charged up for about two to three hours or four to five hours, and that's not you. For no reason, you're feeling lethargic. You, you're very charged up about, about a certain work or project, and you've always been, but now you don't feel like working on it. Could be one of the reasons. Second is, you feel that and you know for sure sometimes that others are jealous of you and the count of number of people is increasing, all right? And sometimes you don't want to see them. Sometimes you don't want to meet them, not because you have anything against them, but you know for sure that they have anything against you and you don't want to fall into that trap. Sometimes you find your eating, sleeping habits going completely off and you find yourself developing some kind of skin scars or marks that you cannot explain. So some of these are emotional, some of these are physical, and some of these are only energy-based signs. Signs that tell you that, you know, there's something going on with your energy field. And whether or not it is an evil eye, it is important to start paying attention when these things start happening. Whether your food intake is going down drastically or your sleeping hours are going down drastically or your water intake is also going down drastically, or you, you, that also is alarming in its own uh, way. So these are some of the signs. And if you think and feel that these are happening with you, th this could be evil eye. All right. So let's now jump on to understanding the science of evil eye, black magic, and entity attachment and knowing the structure of how it basically works when it comes to your spiritual energy. So for which we should basically understand how much energy are we carrying in this point in time, all right? And how this evil eye, when it comes into your spiritual field, your energy field, starts attacking you. It could be many different things, but this is how the spiritual system or structure fundamentally works. So I'm going to give you all a five to 10 minute story and we'll understand. So if I was to say that there was this John and there is Jane, both of them have been very good friends, but uh, in the same trade, in same vicinity they live, they went to the same school. At a certain point in time, John started doing so, so much better while Jane was struggling in her life to, to even survive sometimes. And when she would observe John, instead of being inspired, her only feeling was that, what if I had this? What if... Uh, I made it where he has made it. Or she started questioning, how come he is making so much while I went to the same school, I went to the same very, uh, I did everything that he's done, all right? And I've still not managed it. How did he manage? And now she's becoming curious and questioning. Now let's see when she is developing these feelings of jealousy somewhere, what is really happening with John? He and Jane are connected with one thin thread. While I'm talking, you're listening, we all are also connected with a thin cord or a thread. And from one side, if it becomes dirty because of a certain emotion, thought, any pattern, that dirt starts traveling towards the other person. So that questioning that curiosity turning into jealousies this energy is traveling towards john now when uh, john's energy is like he's a very enthusiastic person and his energy is quite vibrant quite big and small little dirt is coming in like a 
tiny speck. It is not going to affect John. So in his energy field somewhere, this gets dissolved and does not actually reach till his physical system. As soon as it enters John's energy system, it starts dissolving or starts just fading. This continues for two more years between John and Jane. John is just climbing up the ladder while Jane is still struggling. She's better than before, but she's still struggling. Now, two years worth of problem or question she has with John, the jealousy is no longer like a speck or like a tiny thing. It has increased. And maybe there are more people who got added. So let's see and let's believe that there are two more people feeling that way towards John. So like three little arrows coming towards him. And at this point in time, even though John is very enthusiastic, is very vibrant, he's doing all good things, there are three uh, energies coming towards him, which are not like tiny specks, have become bigger. Now this, when comes inside the John spiritual system, slowly starts moving towards his physical system, affecting him. So the very first thing that John will experience are emotional changes. Something like mood swings, something like he will feel very drained, something like uh, he's not liking anything. He doesn't feel like doing it, but he's still managing. He's still fit, he's still fine, and he's managing. Now, one fine day, Jane thinks that what he did or what he's doing is absolutely not acceptable. And she starts doing some kind of work. Now, let's say she did a candle spell, or she started saying, sending dark intentions towards him. Now this is when all the way from evil eye until here, until when the energy was that of jealousy, it was like an evil eye troubling John. Now this evil eye is taking a shape of black magic, dark magic, because you're doing something terribly different. You're taking help or energy support to send uh, negative vibes to the sky. In that case, those tools, that extra energy that Jane is using is amplifying her energy or her intentions towards her. Now, the power of black magic is usually more than evil eye. If, if it is quite big, as much as John's energy, both of them are going to conflict against each other. No, none of them wins or loses, but it is a constant conflict. If it is still smaller, then John's energy is still going to win over it. But if it is bigger than John's energy, it will start troubling him very soon. So much so that he may start having a series of misfortune. He may start feeling and seeing that, oh, nothing he's trying to do is working out for him. Sorry, nothing that he's trying to do is working out for him. The number of clients, his efforts, the kind of magic he's had in his life is reducing. Simply because his entire energy is consumed in fighting this evil in his life. And unless and until he figures out a way to amplify his energy so much so that he can defy this energy coming towards him, he will have a period of struggle. And that's why when we start feeling that nothing is going right in our life, we start cleansing. We declutter our space, we uh, smudge our spaces, we do salt water bathing and so many other things. So that all the negative attachments or the kind of energies we may have attracted or we may have uh, invited knowingly, unknowingly. We don't know what kind of intentions we just want to detach. So here John did something like this. 
we realized that there was something really wrong. Something not helping him. So he does all his cleansing and he again in very short time is back in business. Again doing great, again doing, uh, again climbing up his ladder. Now here the lady feels that, you know, something that she did has not worked out. And I want to do something even darker because I want all his clients. Now her intention is no longer to be a competition. Her intention is to just destroy the person. At that, this point in time, sometimes the people who work with dark magic involve help of other spirit beings. And when I say spirit beings, that means the spirits that have moved out of someone's physical body, but they have not crossed over. So they are still in this realm, but uh, they make treaties, they make other things with the spirits to go and start doing something over this person. Now I'm talking about entity attachments. Sometimes the entities that come to you, they come programmed to do a certain thing in your life. While there are a lot of people who may be portals themselves, attracting all kinds of entities in their life. But when entities come in or any kind of dark magic comes in, so whether it is evil eye, it is black magic or even entity, they latch on to a certain aspect of your energy. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. But so when this kind of force comes in, it comes with a great power. It comes with more smartness. It knows how to move around your or someone's energy field. And at this point in time, John really needs some kind of spiritual help to detach himself from this kind of an entity. And he soon starts working on this. Now, when entities or dark magic or black magic, evil eye, any one of them start latching on to you, what do they latch on to? Any clues or ideas before I move on? Any clues or ideas? What do they latch on to when they are trying to get your energies? I guess if you're feeling low yourself, like if you are feeling depressed, if you're negative, any vulnerabilities, right? So, or like self-esteem issues, etc. Right. <laughs> so any of your low vibrations, these entities feed on them or these dark energies feed on them. So what are your lowest vibrations? Uh, the lowest vibrations we all have are hatred, anger, fear. The lowest of all. And uh, how our energy field usually works is uh, when we work with the highest vibration, it starts expanding. It starts becoming bigger. Like gratitude, love are the highest vibrations. Have you ever observed that we feel that we are in love? Everything starts turning positive. We start liking the life. We start manifesting faster we start attracting a lot of positive people that's because we are living in the highest frequency and our energy field is blooming and when that happens with that much of power we are asking something of universe a hey, universe please give me a great dinner today and it just comes right and someone will invite me a hey, universe i feel like going out on a trip and there are my friends making some kind of plans and it's just happening on its own. So that happens when your energy is vibrating in higher frequency. But there is one, whether you call it a loophole or one condition, even though you're vibrating at highest of the frequencies, even for a split second or a second, you start feeling low. Or you hit your lowest vibration like anger or fear. Your entire 
energy field comes crashing. So, even if it was a loud noise that you heard one fine day, it's very loud. Do you feel that there's something that, that just went down in your stomach? Some emptiness just went in. That is also one of the experiences where we feel that our aura is come, coming crashing down because we felt very fearful because of that loud noise. The same kind of uh, thing happens with our anger. Our body starts reacting in a very different manner. And that is one of the signs of anger. Now, so when we are living in low vibrations, these kind of energies feed on them and they grow. Grow inside of us or inside our energy field, making the power stronger. And when we need to deal with any one of them, whether it is evil eye, black magic, or entity attachment, I observe so many people who come to me saying that, hey, Siddhi, I think I have an evil eye or black magic. Can you please heal that to me? And I started observing them, asking them, what do you feel? How is it happening? Since how long have you been going? And I designed a framework, which is EPS emotional, uh, spiritual, sorry, emotional, practical, and spiritual. And I'm going to share that with you, which is like a first aid to evil eye, right? But before that, I'd like to tell you and share this with you. A lot of times when we feel that there's an evil eye, and a lot of people, when they come to me, they might not even have it. It is some kind of just health complexity. So whether or not there is an evil eye, um, I would like to share one thing with you is to whether or not there is an evil eye, if there's something going wrong with your energy and you're constantly finding yourself in a lower vibration, you need to do something about it. You need to start healing. All right. And when you definitely know that this is not your doing, you're doing your best to be happy, to be grateful, to be in love, but not a person with universe, with something that is so beautiful around you, with a thought, with an idea, even then you you are in love, you are in higher vibration, and even then facing a lot of issues, maybe in monies, maybe in relationships, it is time for you to heal. All right. So. With this, if there are no questions on what I shared, I will move on to giving you the first aid to evil eye. I just want to say, I just want to ask everybody who is here right now, do you think, do you feel from what Siddhi has shared already, do you feel like you have, have experienced, you know, evil eye or black magic or entities or like, are, are you experiencing that any of that now? I'm just curious because like I said, I said at the beginning that, yeah. <laughs> I have recently and in the past, you know, several times, unfortunately. Um, and it's good to hear from Siddhi that, you know, uh, we're not to blame, really, you know, like, like sometimes it could just be that one instance of we went into fear for something. And in that moment, you know, our energy field contracted and, you know, that something was able to enter in, right, Siddhi, I think, I think that's what I'm understanding. So it's, it's not like, you know, we're... Yeah you know because sometimes we will blame ourselves right we will judge ourselves and we will blame ourselves and say it's my fault because I was you know feeling so low or I, I was I was depressed or I was angry or whatever it happens to be but it's but it's not always that I mean yes we do have to take charge of our energy field our emotions but you know stuff stuff happens <laughs> you know we our day is not always 100% perfect, right? So um, it does happen. So I was just curious if anybody, if you want to write in the chat, type in the chat, just let us know if you have actually experienced that yourself. And Siddhi, there was something going on with your microphone. So I just wanted to check in and see if your sound, if it's a bit better now. I, I noticed it at the end. So it's like, I don't know, maybe um, the microphone is touching something and that's why. Uh, is it all right right now? Keep talking. 
Keep talking. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'm sorry. When someone says keep talking, I get little puzzled as to what do I speak now? I know, I know. Yeah, I'm, so there's a, there's a little bit of fuzziness in the, in the background. So there's a little bit of fuzziness in the background. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 I don't know what I was hearing. I was hearing something. So I just wanted to double check and see if every, if, Is this uh, I think that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This should yeah, but yeah, I, I hope so. But it, it's hard to tell when, if, unless you're speaking of like a long sentence, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, are we getting any questions? If we are, we will, uh, I yeah, will I answer them for you. Oh, sorry. If, if you have questions, of course, you can raise your hand or you can type your question in the chat. Um, uh, so Divi says yes and yes. I have and am experiencing it. When said the outline, the effects, each of them checked out. And so what, right. you know, so part of this, it's empowering to know that the reason why you're experiencing certain things is, is not because of anything that you've done or haven't done. It's because, you know, of other this other stuff that may be going on i think that's very empowering for myself right all right so like how you are uh, feeling uh Dewey, and yes uh Sh shabaji yes she's saying how about headaches and sudden low feelings yes sudden low feelings i would take them for sometimes mood swings that, that is just my definition. I'm not saying that you have it, but sometimes you, you're feeling very good and suddenly you don't know what's going on, right? Um, that counts for that as well. However, uh, this framework will also help you deal with this. Whether or not it is an evil act, this framework will help you deal with it. Um, yeah, your energy just drops. Yes, you should start observing what time of the day your energy starts dropping. That could be one of the ways you can figure out whether this is a physical requirement that my body needs some more food or some more water. If it is every day at five o'clock in the evening or four o'clock in the evening, in that case, just work with something that gives you some nourishment around four or five and have your feeling after that. So you can try a couple of combinations. But what I'm going to tell you now is going to definitely help you. This is like a first aid. And it is designed as per what I was just telling you, which is your energy versus the negative energy. It is like a war, right? So when you are keeping your energy up, the other energy will not be able to harm you or hurt you. And keeping the energies up and alive and completely enthusiastic may be sometimes a challenge. But you can take care of your energies using three different things. One is keeping your mind aware. Sorry, of your emotional well-being. Second is just taking a few practical steps. And third is dealing with this some kind of spiritual energies right so let us first look at the emotional well-being so when we are so the idea here is what are your emotional low vibrations first observe that what kind of vibration is your lowest my lowest could be my fear but someone else's lowest could be his anger or someone else's lowest could be some kind of guilt that happened in past so all these are lower vibrations and if they are making you feel down all you need to do is be, start being a little more aware and work with certain kind of techniques to remove them right away what i work with and which is simplest of all is release statements and that's what i'm going to give you right now today so, for example, I'm very fearful about how my month is going to go. Okay, like business people, they have this anxiety all the time. How is my June going to shape up? The month has not even begun. 
they are constantly worrying. So worry could be a lower vibrating uh, emotion for them. In that case, this when this thought has come in, you take a deep breath. And as I breathe out through my mouth, it's important to breathe out through your mouth. All right. For this exercise, say that right now I'm letting the anxiety about my coming month go and transmute. So you're simply releasing. You're taking another deep breath and telling yourself that right now I'm dropping my anxiety about my worries for future. So design a release statement for yourself. So whether or not you're feeling worried right now or every day, if you know that this is like a constant worry in the morning, as soon as you wake up, you can use this release statement for 21 times, even if you're lying down on the bed. This will help you release it uh, out of your system to a very large extent and in a lot of cases, completely out. Right, this works with your subconscious when you wake up. Uh, right when you wake up, your subconscious is still somewhat active and it helps you cleanse it faster. So, being mind aware is one of the very important keys to healing your emotions. Right, and second is think about what would you want to transform this into. So, if it is a worry, if you're letting your worry out. What do you want to fill that void with? So if it is joy, if it is love, if it is uh, just happiness, and then think about what makes you happy, what makes you joyful, what makes you feel like you're in love. And do those activities. It is said that when you laugh only for three minutes in a day, helps you negate a lot of your problems including some kind of health issues. And that helps in here too. When you wish to up your emotional energy, your spiritual energy, laughing for at least three minutes in a day helps you greatly come back to your power, including your emotional power. So if you want to fill it with joy, do things that make you feel joyful. At first, when there are signs of evil eye, it is very difficult for you to actually go and do it. Your mind, your system, your energies will tell you, I can do it tomorrow. I don't want to do it today. It will give you all kinds of excuses. What if this does not happen? What if this does not work out? It will stop you from actually going there and trying it out. At this point in time, it is your sheer willpower that will help you. And that has to be intact. That is something only you can keep alive. No one else will keep that for you. However, watching those uh, pep yourself up videos from time to time, or at least one video a day, will definitely get you there. So in the meantime, when you are trying to kick back to that life, you can take support of these things. Right? Uh, this one such meditation that I will be gifting you, which will come to you or must have already come in, which will help heal these aspects about yourself. Now, the second, we are moving from emotional to practical. What kind of practical things you could do to make this happen? I already told you about one thing, is practically going out and doing those things that make you happy or that make you Feel like you're in love. Apart from that, going out in open air, breathing fresh air, spending some time with nature, whether you're in front of water or you're surrounded by a lot of trees, will help you. Placing your bare feet on the ground for a while, even if you're sitting on the bench, connecting with Mother Earth will definitely help you. And third, divert your mind. A lot of people, when they come to me, 
uh, and they're suffering from black magic, they're constantly blaming or complaining about their suffering. Divert your mind from blames and sufferings to something like expression of art. You can paint, you can dance, you can do something practically that connects you with spirituality. And one of the best things to do is take up a form of art. If you feel connected, take it up. Or if you feel that I need more physical exertion for me to get that punch out of me, you can work out, you can do some other activities. Right? And at any given point in time, you start feeling lethargy. When you start feeling lethargy, that is the point in time you can still kill it. You have a better chance. So make that your moment and divide and just go out. If nothing, just go out, have a 10 minutes walk and come back. Now, and the very last of this is spiritual remedies. And I'm going to tell you about a couple of chants, a couple of spiritual exercises that will help you come into your power. Expand your power in a way that some of these energies will be dissolving in your energy. You'll not have to worry about them so much. So why did I tell you about emotional and practical exercises when you can work with spiritual exercises? The spiritual exercises will definitely expand your aura, will definitely help you uh, become more powerful. But when you have support of emotional and practical exercises, this will make your auric field, the power, more sustainable. <coughs> I'm sorry. So, even when your energy field keeps fluctuating from going slow to expanding, low and large, it will not come down crashing when you have a better awareness of your emotion, when you know how to deal with them. If you're getting angry and you're dealing with this with anger faster, your auric field will not be low, will not be weak for very long time. It will go back to what a beauty it was, right? And that's why I told you about emotional and practical uh, benefits in this or exercises for this. Now, let's move to some spiritual remedies. And today, let's talk about Goddess Mahakali's remedy since this call is all about her. Now, one of the things we work with are beach mantras, the seed mantras, which are like one or two vowel mantras, but they have immense power and potential to bring in transformation. So before I give you out this mantra, a few things uh, I would like you to know that will help you do this exercise in a more profound manner. When you're doing these mantras and you're going through that phase, please drink a lot of water because this uh, uh, mantra chanting will create a lot of warmth or heat inside of you. And drinking more water, will balance things out. Second is uh, try and support the whole work with some kind of positivity or positive affirmation. Holding on to these patterns will help you come out of your problems faster. And let's move on to Goddess Mahakali's mantra which is called, so this mantra is designed to attract her energies towards us. Be one with the energy of Mahakali. So this is also about taking in a little bit of her power and let it flow through us. So when we are doing these mantras, one more thing I'd like you to know is you don't need to count. Whether I completed a count of 50 or 108 or 90 or 20 does not matter. All you need to do is Sit somewhere, light a candle or a diya or a lamp and be with this process. Whether it takes one minute 
or two minutes or three. It is completely fine. However, you should feel a little bit of flow and vibration. And when you start feeling extremely calm and pleasant, you, you will know that, yeah, it is almost the time for me to complete my chant. Right? This mantra is said, cream. K-R-E-E-M. Cream. Now, as I said, this mantra vibration is designed to attract Mahakali's energies. How should you chant? Take a deep breath. Chant it in your mind. Sometimes we chant it out loud as if the entire room has to listen. When you chant it out loud like that, you're clearing the space. You're letting the energy spread in the whole room. You're not keeping it only to yourself and it's not going to be exclusive to you. Sometimes we chant like we are whispering. A cream. Only I and my body can hear it. And this kind of chanting helps you heal your physical self because you're letting the sound vibration flow through your entire being. But when you chant, only inside your mind, you're not moving your lips, you're only focusing on chanting. And you can also look at the words, like cream written in front of you, and you're only focusing on that, or a picture of Goddess Mahakali. That means you are bringing the vibration into your spiritual field. And that is what is required the most when you're chanting to clear out your spiritual field of any evil eye. So when you are chanting this mantra, you're going to be chanting in your mind, not loud, not whispering, in your mind. So it basically, you will feel the vibrations coming down through your crown and flowing in. And it starts cleansing you from inside out. So when you start chanting, start only with one minute, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, go very slow. And don't chant too fast, like cream, cream, cream. You can go slow. Take a deep breath in, chant and breathe out. Let this energy become one with your breathing. Let it synchronize with yourself. And again, breathe in, cream, and breathe out. Again, a deep breath. Breathe. And breathe out. Deep breath. And breathe out. Please take a moment to experience this.
when you feel completely at ease, you can stop chanting and still continue observing your breaths. When you feel comfortable, you can slowly open your eyes. I don't really want to open my eyes. I want to keep them close and just be in that space. <laughs> That's the kind of uh, love the goddess has for us. So uh, those of you who are asking me is how you can pronounce it, uh, think of ice cream and just take cream from there. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, so I've also heard heard um, heard it and spelled it like clean as well. Okay. Clean, clean, etc. All yes. the same thing. So people who um, work with left-handed uh, approach, they chant clean. Okay. People who work with energies with the right-handed approach chanted like cream okay <laughs> got it all right and there's one more way we can use this to cleanse our space so i already told you that when you are chanting it out loud you're anyway letting the entire space have this energy uh and this Usually we avoid chanting this when we are in our menstrual cycles, but this one way we can use to cleanse the space. Uh, take a glass of any kind of water, spring water or tap water, and start chanting this mantra over the water a couple of times, at least 21 times two or more. Sprinkle this water around spray it around you have a spray bottle this also cleanses the energy the entire home your workspace if you wanted to use it for your locker your cupboard your wardrobe or those spaces which need extra attention uh, dark corners or corners of the home where you think that you know this corner every time we sit here we fight or we feel angered or some kind of other emotions we don't want in our life in those corners spray this water and do it instantly you don't have to wait chant use the water around and that's about it next time you want to spray take fresh water chant over it and go up one more way to work with this is if you are in practice of using sage Palo Santo or some kind of smudging of your to protect or create a protective boundary in and around your home. Light it up. Start from any place or corner of your home. It would be great if it is your main entrance and take three clockwise circles as you go on chanting this mantra as you smudge your entire home with that. This also creates a very beautiful protective shield around it. So when you wish to be clearing your space, 
of these energy, you can use this mantra chanting to multiple benefits. And this mantra chanting also has one more benefit. Is this helps you manifest things faster in your life. So whether you wish to heal something or manifest something, this uh, mantra cream will help you in great, great ways. I love it. That's, I mean, it's, uh, it's such easy, easy remedies that we can all do. It doesn't cost anything, <laughs> you know, just water and chanting. It's like, it's so easy. Um, also, so here's a question for you. And Divi, I'm going to ask you a question in a second too, but I, I, since we're talking about these remedies. So what ca can I use this? I mean, I think I can, <laughs> but I'm going to ask anyways. So like, let's say, you know, I have a website, I have this telesummit, right? The show, can I use in my communities, etc. Can I use this mantra to for yes. your, that? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You can use it for the entire community. So think about uh, either the community or WhatsApp group or something that you've created. Mm -hmm. And just visualize that and for benefit or growth, of this community, you can start chanting. Oh, another beautiful thing is if you have a logo or a virtual presence, like a website, just think of it like you're visualizing your website in front of you. Mm -hmm. you place also your palms in blessing position as you chant and let these energies move to the website, to the virtual presence that you have. Awesome. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I think I could use some clearing about of, of that um so the the divi had a question a while back but i, th I think it's it's relevant because a lot of us have this and so her question was about looping thoughts and ideas they could they be related to evil eyes if you have the same looping thought same idea negative usually or not not, not healthy and not, not empowering could th those be related to the evil eye and stuff uh yes they could be yes Yes, yes, yes. This also means that it is a great sign for you to start taking uh, control of your emotions. If you're someone who's not able to understand that you're, this is your boundary and you need to stop thinking about this at a certain point, then you're just letting it flow. Then you're just going with the flow. And it is your choice to go with the flow at that point in time. But yes, it also could be an evil eye, which just uh, makes you consume and lower vibrating thoughts even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I, and and so part of that is important for us to know, be aware of our thoughts, be aware of our emotions, be aware of our feelings on a regular basis, right? And as we are becoming aware of them, to catch them, and you know, uh, our first attempt is to say, no, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking this thought anymore. I'm not feeling this way. I'm going to change my vibration. I'm going to change my frequency. But if it continues, like even after you do that, then, you know, it comes back and continues, then that might be an indication of, yeah, perhaps there's something else going on. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Again, Thanks. why do you want to give into that? Please don't. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, awesome. Thank you. So uh, we are going to take a few more, if people have any more questions about Evil Eye, about Black Magic, any of that kind of stuff, and how to, even, you know, how to work with the mantra. If you if you have any questions about that as well, um, you can raise your hand or type your question in the chat. Um, but I wanted to take a moment, Sidley, and talk about your offers, because there are some amazing, amazing, I'm going to say deals. <laughs> deals uh, that you are offering with uh, to all of our listeners, to our community today. Um, hold on, let me, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so give me one second. Sure. Okay, you should be able to see the screen now. Oh, yeah, there you go. Should be able to see it now. Yes. So the, okay. there are three offers. So Siddhi's Package A is the Mahakali Healing Workshop. Um, and then Package B is the, the Kali Oracle Cards Reading Workshop, plus bonuses. And Package C is the Defy Evil Eye five, five Live Call Healing Sessions and a bonus session. So all these three packages are available. And um, if you're an Inner Circle member, 
uh, please do use your gift code, 10% or 25%. And the there is a payment plan, payment plan available for package B. <laughs> and if you'd like to pay in, in, in R, please email me or send me a message on WhatsApp. All right, so Siddhi, let's talk about the Mahakali Healing Workshop first, and then we'll we'll go in more into everything else. So this is um, like we just talked about. We some of us could use a little bit more healing, could use a little bit more help from Mahakali to uh, assist us in whatever is going on with us right now. Yes, of course. So yeah. there are times when we resort to universal energies. It could be simply prana, ki, chi. And there are times when we actually connect with higher dimensional beings, such as Mahakali, dragons, angels, unicorns. And according to the kind of vibration that we need in a certain time, or the kind of vibration that is ready to help us, that just comes across us. So if you are here, meaning this was a call for you right so mahakali as i said is a power that liberates you from all kinds of shackles and in this workshop we will learn to channelize that power to be a conduit of that power through an attunement process uh, it is channelized into you and then how do you use it to defy evil eye to heal your relationships to cut out all kinds of toxic cords, uh, mend your money energies, all of these will be conducted or taught in this class. This is going to be a Zoom live call. Uh, the process of using Mahakali healing energy, a very simple symbol and ways to work with it. Simple ways to work with Mahakali's yantras and mantras also will be taught and your self-empowerment practice. Uh, so once you are completing this workshop, there is a 21 days of practice post which you can start healing yourself and others, your family members, or you can take this up professionally. Uh, this will equip you, empower you to do that. So if you're someone who's definitely struggling with something or the other, or definitely an evil act, this is a must-do workshop. A uh, lot of students of mine, when started practicing this, experienced great many things. So much so that uh, this lady in her home, in her space, there, there was so much of negative energy. So her plants also could not survive. They started drying up. After using this energy, uh, her, her plants started getting life back. And the space started becoming more happier, joyful space. To many others who found peace in their life, in their health, in their relationships. So this is the true magical workshop, which helps you heal your life of all negative energies. Awesome. So that's package A. And then package B is the Kali Oracle Cards Reading Workshop with the bonuses there's a few bonuses here the special bonus of the mahakali uh, sekim workshop and then the extra bonus which is package a and package c is also included actually package a is mahakali sekim workshop yeah. and uh, right. and uh, this is especially for people who would want to understand why this problem came into my life or what goes behind i also want to read I want to know how much time will it take or I want to be a reader along with a healer. There is a set of Kali Oracle card workshops. Uh, I will take you through the process of understanding what each card means. After that, what is the essence of every card and every goddess that is there in the card to learning different kind of spreads and be very thorough with reading Kali's oracle cards. So this package also includes the healing package uh, and healing sessions. So learning healing and receiving healing. All of them are inclusive uh, with this package. Awesome. Thank and you. I'm not sure if you can hear my dogs barking, but I don't know why they're going crazy. Okay, good. 
<laughs> so again, package B, there is a payment plan available. And uh, for package C, this is a really special price point or bonus for everyone, actually. It's a Defy Evil Eye five live call healing session. So five <laughs> live calls for $15 US, which comes like to $5 per call, which is unheard of, <laughs> to be honest. It's the very first time I'm giving out a deal like this and very excited, very happy to extend it. So the, these are five life healing calls. If, if for any reason you happen to miss out, a replay will be provided uh, for you to be receiving healing energies. It works on removing evil eye. It works on uh, any kind of ill effects of planetary misalignments with your energies. Um, this also works on healing your inner demons, your shadow cells, or something that you can simply term as negative. So as I said, Mahakali is a liberator. She starts freeing you from these shackles. And these five life healings are just meant to restore your personal power by defying everything that's negative in your life. Awesome. And then there's a special bonus, which is a Mahakali transmission session as well. So all that, yes, all that for fifteen dollars Canadian. Um, again, for all these packages, please do use your gift code if you're an Inner Circle member. I'm just going to state them here again. So package A is forty four, package B is ninety two, package C is fifteen. So please do take advantage of these uh, wonderful packages. I think the the first package, the uh, the classes start in June. So June 7th or 8th or something like that. So please do take a look at that and take advantage of these wonderful packages because this, it's not, you know, yes, it's, it's going to help you with evil eye, but it's also going to help you to uh, become more aware of, you know, Kali and her energies and to, and to start to become a channel for her energies or just receive her energies more into you. And of course, you know, this is the, age of the divine feminine and some of us some of us are still requiring more of the divine feminine energies to assist us so that we can be more intuitive so that we can be more in the flow so that we can be more in tune with nature etc so you definitely want to take a look at these and see if uh, um, these can assist you with having more of that energy and that power within you which we which we require in order to create we cannot create without the divine feminine energies so if you're not manifesting um that could be one of the reasons why is that there's you know you just need a bit more of the divine feminine so Kali's energies plus her her healing powers and just you know her protection for sure right awesome all Absolutely. right so <laughs> all right so what else do we have planned for today Siddhi this was like we learned so much already about Mahakali about uh, black magic and entities and um, evil eye, which uh, you know, sometimes we can't control when 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 it happens, how it happens. But at least we have some signs uh, to look at. Of uh, are we experiencing these sorts of things to say, oh, maybe the, it could be right. So instead of blaming ourselves and judging ourselves and beating ourselves up, it's like maybe there's something else going on. Right, they could be, but how would you term that to be? That would also be something negative, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that means if I have a negative in life, that means it's time for you to start clearing it out. Uh, I was planning that we could end today's call before we end. Uh, towards the very end, I would love to give out a small healing, a meditative mm -hmm. healing. Uh, and we can end our call with that so people can go back with that kind of a vibration. But before we move to that, I think we should uh, answer the questions or speak all that we wanted to uh, say our words and then move to that. So once that is over, we can simply thank and people can still stay in the vibration if that's mm -hmm. all right with everyone. Yeah. So does anybody have any other questions for Siddhi about the packages, about... Mahakali about uh, entities, black magic, evil eye, etc. Um, how to use the 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 chanting of the mantra, how to chant, when to chant, etc. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, any questions? If not, then we'll go into the meditation and um, we will end with the energy of you being in the healing meditation. So I'm going to thank you all right now <laughs> before before we get into that. Thank you so much, everyone, for your questions, for being here with us. And of course, go back and watch and listen to this again, because there's, again, again, more information for you to receive, right? And the inf information is key. It's important for you to recognize. And again, I, I want to say really quickly, too, this is not about putting you into fear. This is, for me, it's about empowering you to know that there are tools and resources and support available for you so that you don't have to be stuck in negative worry and negative energies or being attacked or et cetera, because you know, it's it's never about putting you into fear. It's always about empowering you to be more and to create with that energy. Right. Um, yes. Linda has a question. Once entities, once entities are transmuted, are they gone for good or can they come back? Uh, wow. Yes. Uh, so there are times when they return simply because they were programmed that way that if, even if they have to detach from you, they may come back. However, by the time they come back, you have a greater protective shield around you. Uh, they are not able to latch on to you the way they used to. All right. So yeah, while there is a chance for them to come back, and in most of the cases, they do not return. But very few, very minuscule chance for them to return. They may not be able to attach with you the way. And I just want to add to that too. I, I want to add to that really quickly so they like yeah you know a specific entity may not be able to attach back to you but that does not mean that another entity cannot it, it really it depends on you also being aware and cognizant of your energy field your emotions your thoughts and checking your field one of my teachers had, had said this long time ago every week you got to check your field every week every week and i'm like every week are you kidding me <laughs> but you know um so if 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 I have, if I'm not checking my field every week and stuff is getting into my field, you know, yeah. So um, you still have to be, you still have to maintain, right? You still have to have that maintenance for yourself, I think. Yes. And thank you, Alara, for this. This was also very important. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's simple, simple practices, like, like what... Siddhi taught us today with the water, with the chanting, with the Palo Santo or the sage smudging with the mantra. Those are easy things we can all do, right? So if we do that once a week, you know, or once a month, even it will help. Or every day. <laughs> the chanting is not, doesn't take long. Like, you know, like Siddhi said, even a minute, you know, and just chanting over your water, it doesn't take long. Um, and then Divisa asking, would the negative entities being of low wavelength experience high wavelength energies as burning? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought of that. I've never thought of that. Nobody's ever asked that question. I have no idea. Uh, I could just term it like a repellent. I don't know whether it is burning for them or it is freezing for them, but it is like a repellent. They will be oh. repelled. By yeah, repellent. The high yeah. vibration is... Uh, a repellent for uh, I'm going to say the in the English way repellent. <laughs> repellent. <laughs> says it the Indian way. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm so sorry. No, 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 it's okay. So it's it's like the uh, the entity gets repelled right from your field. So I don't. <laughs> I, I know I've never heard of that. I've never asked. I've never cared to be honest. I just wanted them gone. Um, but you know, it's I don't think so. I don't I don't think it's like punishment in that way, you know? Like when we are banishing entities from our field or whatever, I don't think we're we're harming them in our way. I don't think and I wouldn't want to. So I just think it's like getting them out of our field. That's it. And then you know, go to the light, go wherever. I don't know, I don't care, just be out of my field. Right? So I don't I don't think so, to be honest, when I'm when I'm tapping in, I don't think so and maybe because I'm just I wouldn't like to think that because I wouldn't like I wouldn't like them to be burning and be in pain and suffering. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm gonna say no. <laughs> in my in, in my world in my reality, no, they just go. <laughs> 
I'm I'm so I'm I'm such a sap in that way too, right? Like, it's like I don't I don't want even them to be harmed, right? <laughs> okay, thank goodness. I don't mean it as harming, but when they're trying to get in but blocked by positive, I think when you you have a protection in your field, it your your energy field, like Sidney says, it repels it, right? So they can't get in. They can't they, they can't even touch your field, you know. So I think it just. It's kind of like they don't even see you. It's more, it's for me, it's more like that. They don't even see you. Your vibrational frequency is so high and so light, they can't even see you. That's what I, I that's what I've been told in the past. You, but yeah, one one common example that we see is when we are uh, walking our spiritual path and the spirituality inside of us is increasing, we will realize that the kind of friends we are making are more evolved are wiser and all the friends that we had uh lower vibrating or toxic they will just move out they will be distant and suddenly you're not in touch with them not that and, something and, happened between you yeah and they're just not interested in you because they, they you know they have other stuff to do so they're just not interested in you anymore yeah it's, it's yeah. the same sign here yeah i like that better <laughs> i like that better <laughs> Yeah, they're just, you know, they, they've got bigger fish to fry, right? So it's like they got other stuff to do. So, but yeah, great question, Divi. I've never, I've never thought of that. So yeah, great question. All right. Uh, it's like a divergence of life paths. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like you're on one track, they're on another track, and the two tracks don't meet, right? So they're parallel or ish, right? So they 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 can't because they're a different vibration, different frequency, right? So they they can't see you. That's what I think. <laughs> that's what I'm feeling. That's what I, that's that's what my guides are telling me. So that's what I'm I'm gonna go with. But when my vibration is low, I'm matching that frequency, right? Their frequency. And that's why they're able to see me and like, oh, look at her. Let's, you know, let's have some fun, right? But when my vibration is high, they can't see me. I don't exist for them. That's what I mean. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> Anybody else have any other questions? Awesome. All right. So um, we are going to do a short little healing meditation or Siddhi is going to, and then we will, you know, let you stay in that energy as we close off. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> All right, Siddhi, go ahead. Start. Yes. As I start, before I start, thank you so very much for being with me here today. And let's uh, take a dive into Goddess Mahakali's power. So before we start, my request to all of you is to please have some water. If any one of you is striving, please pull over or do this later. If any one of you is doing something else, just calm yourself down, be centered and do it in a way which is not taking your attention away. Close your eyes. Start taking deeper breaths. Start relaxing yourself completely. Relax your toes, your feet, your calves. Relax your knees, your thighs. Relax your hip joints. Relax your entire spine. Relax your lower abdomen, upper abdomen, chest and shoulders. Relax your upper arms, your lower arms, your palms. Relax your face, your neck, your eyes, your eyebrows, relax completely. Now 
But this simply a form in your mind, in your heart, that I'm ready to receive Goddess Mahakali healing sent to me by Siddhi right now. Start taking deeper breaths. As you think about the most annoying thing in your life that you would want to get rid of for that negative presence in your life. Could be a negative emotion, your inner shadow, or a situation you feel stuck inside. When you decide to let this thing out of your mind, your body, your spirit energy. Take a deep breath. And let a flow of gold and light start flowing all over you. And every time you will hear a mantra chant, the flow of this light will expand, create an exploding feeling around you in a sweet way, in a way that only negativity inside of you is getting removed and your health is getting restored. This is like an explosion of joy, of power of peace. Take a deep breath, as I say. Cream. Cream. Take another deep breath. Breathe. One more deep breath. Cream. With the golden energy low inside of you, like your own blood in your veins, let it start powering you up. Take a deep breath, cream. Cream. Observe your heart, your gut, 
and radiate this golden light out from your heart, out from your gut. With a couple of more chants, golden light brighter than sun starts surrounding you to create a beautiful, powerful protective shield. Cream. 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 Take a deep breath and breathe out through your mouth. Another deep breath and now through your mouth. And a deep breath and out through your mouth. And relax. Let these energies beautifully synchronize with you. Observe the power inside of you. Observe how safe you're feeling in this protection. With this, let us come together to thank Goddess Mahakali, the universe, and this divine home. Take your time to be in this space in this vibration and spend a couple of more minutes. But with this, I will take your leave and I thank you once again on behalf of Alana and myself. Thank you for attending this call. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. You will take your leave now.